Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back once again to Mingles with Jingles, where I do actually have quite a bit to talk about this week. Uh, the first thing, because I've actually been meaning to talk about this for several weeks now, but, well, I'm kind of crap and I keep forgetting. Um, you may have noticed, in fact it'd be difficult to know how you hadn't noticed, that over the course of the last month or two I've been experiencing something of an audio desync issue on some of my videos. It usually starts occurring towards the end of the video where what you can see happening and what you can hear happening are uh, not exactly matched up. So here's the deal. I have no idea what's causing it and I have no idea how to fix it. I'm not actually doing anything different. I mean I've been publishing videos on YouTube for nine years now and most of the time they've been perfect. Most of the time they've been technically perfect. Uh, whether or not the content is perfect is up to you to decide. But technically there's been nothing wrong with them. Well, except for that one time I didn't realise I was actually watching and recording the World of Tanks replay at half speed and spent the whole video talking about how slow the tank was. <laughs> you know, aside from things like that, the videos have been technically perfect, nothing wrong with them. And then suddenly, with no warning whatsoever, a couple of months ago, the occasional video, because it's certainly not all of them, but the occasional video started experiencing audio desync. And it's not at YouTube's end. I thought there might have been a problem with um, the upload and the transcoding at YouTube, but then I'd go and check the source video that I'd uploaded from the day before, and yep, there's a definite audio see uh, desync sorry, occurring towards the end. So it had to be something that I'm doing, but I'm not doing anything differently from everything that I've done before. I use NVIDIA Shadowplay to record the raw video footage. I've been using NVIDIA Shadowplay for at least the last seven years because uh, while initially I was using Bandicam screen capture and recording software because it's bloody good for the price, it is software and it does compress the video as it goes in order to keep the file sizes down. So there's something of a system overhead there. And because Shadowplay is basically hardware level video encoding there's very little system overhead so the overall quality of the video can be much much higher and I've been using Shadowplay since forever so I haven't suddenly started using new software or hardware to get my screen capture once I've got the screen capture it goes into my video editing software which is Cyberlink Power Director and again I've been using Cyberlink Power Director since almost the very very early days of my whole video YouTube thing. The first video editing software that I used was the one that came with Windows which Microsoft discontinued about eight years ago. I can't even remember what it was called. I've been using PowerDirector for that long. Oh, Windows Movie Maker. That was it. And Windows Movie Maker was fine for basic video editing and it was free. Uh, but Microsoft discontinued it ages ago and I've been using PowerDirector ever since. Admittedly, PowerDirector does get an update at least once a year with smaller patches at irregular intervals throughout the course of any given year. But these audio desync issues didn't start happening right after a PowerDirector update, so I can't really blame it on my video editing software. So then I thought, well, what I did start doing relatively recently was capturing and uploading in resolutions higher than 1080p, 2K and 4K resolution. I mean, there was a period when I started doing exclusively 4K uploads, but it's, you know, it takes four times as long to render and four times as long to upload. So instead, I've now scaled it back a bit uh, to 2K video, which still looks good on a 4K screen, even though the vast majority of people playing games and watching videos on YouTube are still doing it on 1080p screens and there's nothing wrong with that, it still looks good. So I thought, well maybe that was it. I mean I didn't think that was going to be it because I have a new PC which is way more powerful and easily capable of rendering and in fact it, this PC renders 4K video faster than my previous PC rendered 1080p video. So it shouldn't be that the PC couldn't handle 2 or 4K video production. But just to check, I went back and re-rendered some of the videos that were experiencing audio desync in 1080p instead. And they still had audio desync. 
which suggests that there's a problem with the initial screen capture. But there wasn't any problem with the initial screen capture. The raw video that I'm collecting from the various different replay files has no audio desync. Live gameplay that I capture in, for example, you know, stuff that isn't World of Tanks and World of Warships, like Subnautica, like Microsoft Flight Sim, has no audio desync. It's perfect. The problem only occurs after I process it in PowerDirector to get the finished video with commentary. And then suddenly, there's audio desync. So I'm capturing video in the same way that I always have. I'm processing video in the same way that I always have. I'm recording my own audio in the same way that I always have. And then sometimes, maybe one time out of ten, I'm getting some audio desync. I, I just can't explain it. And I certainly have absolutely no idea how to fix it. I can't predict when it's going to happen. And I can't understand why it happens when it does. So if any of you guys have any suggestions, I'm all ears. Oh, actually, a funny thing just occurred to me. You know, they say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. But I am doing the same thing over and over and over. And I am getting different results. Well, since we're here, and since I do have Microsoft Flight Simulator running in the background, uh, I thought it was time to once again mention that while I appreciate that some of the most popular parts of Mingles with Jingles are when I tell stories from my days in the Navy, I'm not saying that I'm not going to do that from now on in Mingles with Jingles, but I will remind everybody, particularly those of you who may have seen a Microsoft Flight Sim video go up and thought, yeah, not interested. But the content of those Microsoft Flight Sim videos is basically exactly that, me telling stories of the places that I've visited during my 22 years in the Royal Navy, while flying over and around them in Microsoft Flight Sim. So if that's the kind of stuff that you do turn up to Mingles with Jingles for, we're still going to be doing some of that stuff, but that's all that the Microsoft Flight Sim videos are, so check them out. You will probably enjoy them. Next up. I, I don't know, maybe this means I'm just a bad person at heart, but I do so love it when big companies get themselves into trouble. <laughs> There's just something so satisfying about it. And there's all kinds of big companies been getting themselves into trouble lately. You're probably aware, because I have talked about it in the past, and don't worry, I'm not going to be rehashing it all again today, but there's a bit of a lawsuit going on between Epic, Apple and Google. Now, I certainly don't have a horse in this race. Uh, I don't really care who wins or loses, because they're all just as bad as each other. But I read with some amusement this week that apparently Google had been considering buying their way out of trouble with uh, Epic Game Studios by, well, buying Epic Game Studios. <laughs> <laughs> it was reported that Google had been considering buying a majority share in Epic because it's a publicly traded company and then using their majority shareholder power to basically force Epic to drop the lawsuit against Google whether or not they were going to use their majority shareholder power to force Epic to drop their lawsuit against Apple, um, Google didn't comment on. Probably not. <laughs> but the very idea that you can get yourself out of trouble in court by simply buying the people who are filing the lawsuit against you is... Um, well, it basically says everything that you need to know about the modern Western legal system and not in a good way. Yeah, it turns out, not that we probably actually needed any further reminding of it, but it does turn out that you can win any legal battle as long as your pockets are deep enough. And Google has some pretty deep pockets. Although they would need pretty deep pockets to buy a majority share in Epic, because it was also revealed this week, and again, this is probably not going to come as a huge surprise to anybody, that Epic has apparently dumped half a billion dollars into the Epic Game Store and it's still not expecting to see a profit until 2027. Although I was particularly amused when I uh, went to the Epic Game Store today in order to just do a little bit of research and was particularly amused that despite the half a billion dollars of investment in the Epic Game Storefront they still don't have a working shopping cart system. 
if you want to buy anything from Epic, you still have to do it one game at a time. It's worth pointing out that Google apparently only considered this majority shareholder takeover of the Epic Game Store. They didn't go ahead with it, but I'd love to know why not. I mean, they're Google, they can obviously afford it. And while they wouldn't see a return on their investment until the year 2027 at the earliest, it's probably still a good investment. Although perhaps it's just as well that they didn't, for whatever reason, because we are talking about Google here. I mean, at the moment, Epic is doing really well. But if Google were to take over and start dictating how Epic do their business, well, in the world of massive tech companies, you don't have to look much further than Google to find a company that's capable of taking what looks like surefire investment wins and turning them into utter money-losing disasters. Like... Oh, I don't know, Google Stadia, Google Glass, yeah, no. While we're more or less on the same subject, let's talk about wargaming. Yes, again. It's like, I don't know. The smoke hasn't yet cleared on the whole HMCS Yukon thing. A communications failure and PR disaster of such proportions that the publishing producer of Wargaming North America himself had to step in, issue a personal and heartfelt apology, and once again promise to do better. And already we're seeing more of the same. And before we get on to the actual subject, remember none of what you're going to hear is new as far as Wargaming are concerned. They have a track record of saying one thing and actually delivering another. You've got the HMCS Yukon thing, and I'm, there have been so many examples over the course of the last five years that I'm almost certain to be missing some of them, but I'll do my best to try to remember. The HMCS Yukon thing, then prior to that there was the uh, misleading Christmas, and I'm using the word misleading in a very, very generous context here, the misleading Christmas loot box thing. Then there was the whole USS Puerto Rico dockyard dumpster fire of a PR disaster. Prior to that there was... I can't remember exactly which one it was. The introduction of a premium German aircraft carrier, whichever one it was, where when it went on sale, it was absolutely not the same thing that everybody had reviewed or previewed. More recently, we had the whole uh, removal of the ability to earn flags for achievements within World of Warships, which one of the North American community people laughably tried to pass off as a measure to prevent people from farming detonation flags. <laughs> <laughs> to this day I still can't believe that's what he actually said and I'm sure there's more I mean I know that there's more but right now sitting in front of my PC off the top of my head I, I, I can't remember and this is just World of Warships I mean if you include World of Tanks well there's the big one of course the whole Sir Foch incident where even mainstream media started to take an interest in wargaming shenanigans but there is a long and proud tradition of saying one thing, delivering something else, and then passing it all off as a simple translation error or miscommunication. And they've just done it again. And I'm talking about the brand new Distant Voyages Summer Sale Loot Crates. Now, if you were to go to the World of Warships portal, you won't see any evidence of what it is that I'm going to talk about because it has been fixed. But originally when these crates went on sale in the premium shop they specifically stated that each distant voyage loot crate, not some distant voyage loot crates, each and every distant voyages loot crates would, right, not might, not there's a chance of, would furnish you with a permanent camouflage that you did not already own for one of the ships included in the list associated with this particular summer sale. If you go to the armory page now, it says each distant Voyager's container has a chance to drop a permanent camouflage that you don't already have, but that's not what it said at the time that the sale went up. It said Every time you opened one of these containers, you would get one of the permanent camouflages contained within the containers that you did not already have. 
So, of course, we were all terribly shocked and surprised to learn that this was, well, basically a lie. No, of course we weren't, because it's wargaming. Lying to us, misleading us and deceiving us, then getting caught and then furiously backpedalling and promising to do better in future is just what they do. This time around, they tried to pass it off as a simple translation error, and I could have bought that if it hadn't been mistranslated into every single language available exactly the same way. They seriously expect us to believe that the 15 translators who translate the Russian into all of the regional languages in the EU all made exactly the same translation error in exactly the same place. Everything that goes up on the EU portal first has to be translated into 15 different languages. Right, not just English, German, Spanish, French, Italian, Polish, Portuguese, Turkish and a whole bunch of other languages that I can't even pronounce the names of. Every single one of these translators made the same mistake at the same point and the same time and nobody noticed. That's an astonishing coincidence. <laughs> I mean, I'm not particularly good at mathematics, but I'd love to know what the odds of that happening by accident were. This is your excuse this time, is it, Wargaming? This is what you expect us to believe. Fuck off, Wargaming. Just how stupid do you think we are? I mean, even if this was the very first example of getting caught out lying and misleading, and it isn't. <laughs> Not by far. But even if this was the very first example, even if Wargaming had built up an enormous stock of goodwill amongst its games community, and this was the first time they tried to do something sketchy and got caught on it, calling it a translation error <laughs> and expecting us to believe that is such a shocking massively disrespectful insult to our collective intelligence as a gaming community that I don't even know where to start. Although, well, we are talking about the company here that thinks aircraft carrier players are too stupid to be able to manage their own consumables, so, I don't know, maybe they did think they would get away with it. Maybe they do actually think that we are all that stupid. So, anyway, they, uh, they rushed to correct the description of what it was that you could expect to receive inside these loot boxes. And they are issuing refunds to anybody who bought one of these loot boxes in the expectation, because that's what it said, that they would get one of these permanent camouflages every time they opened a crate. All you have to do is submit a ticket to customer support. And then I saw the response that they were giving to people who submitted customer support tickets. And it reads like this. Dear Commander, I'd like to tell you that we decided to honour your request and refunded the purchase of the containers in question. You decided to honour our request. Well, how fucking gracious of you. Just how arrogant and condescending is that? Now, fortunately for me, I haven't been the victim of too many anti-consumer practices by big companies in the past. But on those occasions where I have, you usually see something like, Dear customer, followed by phrases like, Please accept our apologies. Or, we are very sorry. We are ashamed that you have had a less than perfect experience at the hands of our company. Please accept a full refund, and usually some kind of freebie, in order to compensate you for the time that you wasted both making the purchase of whichever product it was that didn't satisfy you, and then having to go to the trouble of filing a complaint in the first place. But there's none of that with Wargaming. Oh no, no, with Wargaming you get... Yeah, fine, we've decided to honour your request. Like, wow, how generous. You decided to do the bare minimum required by law in as condescending and arrogant a manner as possible. And they wonder why we don't trust them anymore. Seriously, Wargaming, I love your games. But you need to stop saying that you're going to do better. And actually start doing better. Because nobody believes a fucking word you say anymore. It's gotten to the stage now where you're held in the same regard as electronic arts, where every time you say something, people are checking the small print to try to figure out how you're going to fuck us on this. 
That is not a good look for you as a company. And it never used to be this way. The community as a whole used to have so much goodwill for World of Warships and its publishers, Wargaming. Because you never used to do things like this. But that goodwill has steadily eroded over the course of the last probably three years or so to the point where you're just not trusted because you've shown that you can't be trusted. It's going to take a huge effort on your behalf to win the community back, if you even care about winning the community back. And at this point, we're not entirely sure that you do care, because we keep hearing you talk about how much you care and about how much you're going to do better out of one side of your mouth, and then just a couple of months later, you're lying to us and misleading us out of the other side of your mouth. So. You kind of need to show that you care. And that's not something that we can help you with. That's got to come from you. And you have to start meaning it. And on that bombshell, that's it for this week's episode of Mingles with Jingles. I hope I've given you something to talk about. I'm sure I have. I'll see you down below in the comments. And in the meantime, as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.